Howdy all you delicious people. I am here today to review V for Vendetta. Surprisingly, when I had re originally watched this film, and I'll, I'll get to the surprising part in a second here. When I originally watched this film, I thought that this movie was boring. I thought this movie was boring. I didn't understand it. There's a lot of stuff where I'm just like, okay, like, like I had to kind of piece together like why this person was doing what he was doing. And that just created an unenjoyable thing for me where I was just kind of like, man, this movie just like, ugh, like I think was my original thought. Funny how now years later, it seems like we have grown or come into a world where like an anarchist during this time that this movie came out like really didn't make a lot of sense to me like there was a lot of stuff here that really didn't quite make sense during the time that this movie came out like they picked the worst possible time to actually put a movie out there like this because it doesn't match at all what was going on in society and so funny how even much more so now, this movie makes a lot more sense now than it did the time it actually came out. Uh, it's also kind of funny because this is a DC comic books thing. And so it's kind of funny to have me actually enjoy a DC comic books film uh, simply because I was like, this is a DC thing? Oh, wow, that's interesting. Because you kind of normally forget all the stuff that uh, that at some point was like, oh, yeah, I guess that was a comic book thing. Nah, didn't know. Or didn't remember. But, so... This movie makes a lot more sense now, but for a lot of people... Uh, when I possibly review it, it may not make any sense, or it'll be in a very roundabout way to review this film. But this movie is so much more enjoyable now, um, just because the thing that kind of got to me was we have this government that is viciously trying to cover up this anarchist acts. And I was like, man, that kind of doesn't really happen all that often. A lot of times you would have it where, like, the only time that that would really have actually happened would be in, like, some kind of supernatural superhero kind of film or, like, a Men in Black scenario where they would say, like, hey, some light's being reflected off of Venus and that's what caused this uh, problem to occur and so on and so forth. So... In this movie, we, when V is to go off and kill somebody, they turn around and just say, oh no, this, this person didn't kill, didn't get killed from anarchist means. They ended up getting killed because they had died naturally in, in their sleep uh, last night from a heart attack or something like that. And I'm like, oh my god, like they're going out of their way to try and hide the fact that this guy is going around and murdering people by, I guess, these injectional means, which is to mean, like, we find out when he is to go after his last uh, person on his list that I guess he is to inject these people with the same hormonal batch five injection that he was to have received which was to benefit him but kill a number of people off i would naturally assume would be the poetic justice thing to go about that but like i think he just gave them all poison and murdered them all off by that means and but you don't really see how all these people are to die off you just see their bodies just bah, somewhere. And I'm just like, shouldn't they, shouldn't he have shown like how exactly he kills everybody? Like this kind of feels like a crow scenario where 
like you just have the bodies laying there with the crow symbol and like that's all that really matters like it got to the point where they didn't really show people's deaths they just showed that they were to die and crow symbol and i'm like that kind of sucks <laughs> that doesn't make a lot of sense come on <laughs> Like, the movies just got, like, to where they were trying to avoid being more and more violent at some points. But anyways, so... So going into this, like, I liked how we have had this anarchist who is going and... Taking down certain buildings because the symbol of them is meaningless. Or... Really, he is to just take down symbolic-like things, like a government official that is to be found to have this kind of uh, fascist-like group attachment. And how we also have a, uh, a symbolic-like thing in Big Ben that is to be the building that everyone is to really recognize in Britain is to go on and is to, of course, towards the end of the film, detonate this building because it's a symbol that everyone is to recognize and so on and so forth. So here is the one thing that is to now kind of bug me about this movie, uh, because after I was to go and watch this film, Everybody's big question in this movie was whether or not V was actually blind. Because supposedly there's this one stretch of dialogue where we have this one character in this movie who is to supposedly... Uh... Surridge? Sir, Sir, Surridge, whatever her weird, goofy name is, uh, Dahlia Surridge, she is to mention at some point in this movie that V wasn't looking directly at her, but she could sense that he was looking at her. So, like, people could say that he could see... But I could also see that as, like, V could probably sense she was there, but may not have actually seen her. May not have actually been able to see her. Or maybe this hormone thing that he had been injected with regave him the ability to see, or something... Of that equivalent. V also is to like there are a number of times where people would object that V could see like he supposedly is to watch a movie that is to be of some sword fight I'm like he could have probably seen this movie hundreds of times before he could have been taken and gone off to that one uh, camp that he was to go off to. And so he had probably memorized the film and had kind of visually memorized it in his head. But the real thing that V was to really take from this, uh, like from this, was that he was to have memorize the lines like that was his thing was really just memorizing the lines of the movie like it didn't matter that he actually saw the film it just mattered that he memorized all the lines which could probably say that he is blind but is to watch a movie simply for like hearing the film enjoying the film we also have v who is to have music and is to rattle off and mention that like oh there are X amount of number of songs. Like, he could have just played every single song in that jukebox and could have come up with every single combination and figured out how many songs that existed in there and so on and so forth. And the one thing that, 
a lot of people would say it's like, well, why did V have paintings? Well, you could probably have it be that V was expecting for V to have company at some point. <laughs> You could say that someone else could be looking at these paintings of like, oh, wow, this is nice. This is beautiful. And you could have it be that V uh, was to steal all these paintings because otherwise they would have been destroyed. So he could have probably have seen <laughs> these paintings at some point uh, before he was to have gone blind and he could have remembered them and saved them and whichever. But that still doesn't help us understand the whole Valerie Page shrine of things uh, and so on and so forth. But uh, we could just come up with some kind of idea for why that happened. So because... Uh, yeah, so, so is V blind? Is V not blind? We could also have the moment where V was to have supposedly saw Evie, um, coming into the room, and so he was to have stopped, uh, fighting this statued knight, which we could also just say again that it's probably just one of those scenarios where he probably, like, he heard her? <laughs> he heard her, and so his face tilted to her direction to make it look like he saw her. Like, there could have been any number of things where, um, I think a big reveal could have been that, like, we could have had a Book of Eli kind of situation where we find out that V was blind this whole time. Like, why did V, like, out of mask, be wearing sunglasses during a, during a very darkened like area to hide his face or to really just keep us believing that this guy could have quite possibly had been blind. Um, I don't know. You just have to ask and figure out like the skill upon this person or whether he has some kind of... Uh, thing that maybe we just don't quite understand. So with that said, let's just go into that double five. Let's go into spoilers. Let's go on and talk about this film. Let's go into spoiler time, spoiler time. It's about the time you spoil this movie. So one thing that I kind of have to set up, uh, if I didn't set up that this movie was in HBO Max, go ahead and check the movie out. Uh, so... The very beginning of this movie, we have to kind of go and talk about certain things that happened upon uh, even before the start of this film or before the, the actual starting of this film. Like, let's go and focus on certain things. So there was this there was this St. Mary's virus that were, I guess, to have killed uh, 100,000 people um, because it had arrived on Europe, I guess, uh, after it was to have gone through America. And so the St. Mary's virus was to have been concocted by, uh, a man who is to become a, uh, a police officer for, uh, for the, uh, the politician who is to be Adam Sutler, uh, Creedy is to be this guy who was to put together this whole uh, St. Mary's virus to put together some biological warfare, but he was to say that it wasn't him, that it was to be some terrorist group who was to have brought this virus upon our on upon our uh, soil or upon our country. And so now they had to go and figure out and wipe those people out. 
And they also went on to go and take certain people who they either said were to be a part of this terrorist group or they were to have supposedly taken people to say that they were going and protecting them. But instead, they all took these people to this uh, Lark Hill uh, resettlement camp where they experimented on them and they uh, and they tested them uh, with because I, I heard different kind of variations of this story where supposedly it was either with this batch five like thing or it was these like hormonal like drugs and so and that seemed to, for how many people that they had captured, uh, they had gone on to kill 25% of them. And so it seemed that the virus was, or the, the hormonal drug, the Batch 5, was to have eventually worked for one person who was to actually have been V. And so we find out that V was to go on and figure out a way to concoct certain uh, certain things like certain fertilizer, like steal certain fertilizer, to go on to implant that into a cell and then detonate this fertilizer to then escape this prison. And so V did not want to seek vengeance upon upon um, these people just because for his own self reasons. No, V wanted to seek vengeance upon these people who had put this whole thing together because the virus that was in this film had certain people in certain parts of the world become rich off of it because they had come up with this cure and they had come up with this way to solve this whole virus and had gotten rich or much more uh, important um, because of this whole... Uh, epidemic like thing so we have v wanting to seek vengeance off of that but also that v wanted to seek vengeance because of a girl named valerie page who had gone on to give him some note from a from toilet paper about her life and how she had uh found the love of her life with some woman and then Valerie had gotten captured and gone on to reveal that her actress uh, woman uh, was to have, uh, like she basically fingered her wife and just said that she had been a part of this uh, regime-like thing so that way she could get free, so that way she could uh, receive freedom, but instead she just went on to be stuck in prison. So, like, I thought that that was kind of an interesting moment of this movie, uh, and so, like, Valerie was forced, because she had been in prison for so long, she had been tortured and in and, and pain for so long that she was to just point out anybody, forcibly her own lover, to then uh, turn around and still be in this prison for I don't know how long. Probably taken to the back of some chemical shed somewhere and executed. Or even died because of the drug that she had taken had not worked. 
and they had killed her off. So, now we turn around into the very beginning of this film. Um, hoping that I covered most of that in the best way that I could. So, it seems that V is to have a list of certain characters that he is to go after. Creedy, of course, being one of them, but he is going to go after certain people, um, like going after a pastor, going after a guy who is to have gone on to be this public figure, who is to be this uh, kind of like uh, for like certain people, like this anchor who is to be going on TV and is to uh, kind of tell people his thoughts and and his beliefs and how like uh like he is trying to manipulate or uh persuade people to uh listen to him for every single day that he is to go on and do this televised thing mentioning how um these certain people should be smited and so on and so forth so we go on into this film, and so the very beginning of this film, we have where uh, where supposedly uh, Evie is to, I guess, realize it is to be curfew, but Evie is to just be like, well, I need to go out to supposedly take care of my sick uncle, which isn't really the truth, because she is just going and running off to a guy named Dietrich, to, I guess, maybe share some uh, sh some beers or some alcohol or something like that together. Because we find out when Evie is to re-meet up with Dietrich uh, after a certain part of this film, we find out that that's where she was actually to be heading uh, on that night in question. But anyways, Evie is to go off in the night and so uh it seems that we have some uh guys who are to be called fingermen uh and so we have these guys one of them's called willie one of them's called tweed uh and so on and so forth uh i think one of them's called baldy <laughs> and so all three of these guys are to go on and take advantage of Evie because she is technically outnumbered. And so they decide to want to take advantage of her. And so while these guys are to go and drop trowel, we all of a sudden have V who is coming to the defense of this defenseless woman. Going on and killing all of these men because they had decided to uh, go on and, uh, like, go against, uh, this one woman. So, we have, of course, V, who is to, of course, kind of run off into the night afterwards, but we have V, who is to just kind of have these, like, several different V's that are to mention certain kind of things to have Evie understand who this guy is. But what we're really to understand is that this guy is an anarchist of sorts. And so V is to go on and is to ask Evie, it's like, well, hey, like, uh, would you like to hear some music? And so Evie is like, okay, sure, that sounds nice. So both Evie and V are to go off to this one location. And so uh, V is to start preparing the orchestra. He is to have this one stick out and he is to start uh, going away into uh, like doing a metronome like thing of timing for this band 
And so he's uh, starting to ask for the strings. He's starting to ask for this. He's starting to ask for that. So all of a sudden, people over these intercoms are starting to hear music. And they're like, oh, my God, like, we're hearing music? Like, this is weird. Because I think music is normally something that I guess is to be outlawed here. So hence why V is to have music. And it seems that music for a lot of people is to have been a forgotten art form, I guess. So V is to tell us that there is to be this court, uh, courtroom, uh, that of course is to be taken down in this film. And because the, the statue of, uh, of justice that is to be upon it is to be a meaningless symbol that does no longer exist. Like, there is no justice, there is no real justice here. So he is to go and take down this courthouse because of this one symbol not making sense. So, V, of course, is to explode this courthouse, and so within the very next day of news, everyone is going out of their way to cover this thing up, mentioning that supposedly the courthouse was to have been meant to go under construction but the only thing that possibly i don't think was planned was the fireworks show that was to be afterwards of that so they're already like desperately trying to cover up this whole courthouse bombing and i thought that that was hilarious so we then turn around and have uh of course, V go on to try and take over this news broadcast um, station, uh, which I think was called like uh, I think it was called like British uh, British Television something. It was like called like BTT or something like that. It was like B. Uh, God, what was it? uh btn there we go uh british televised network or something like that yeah there we go so v is to go in and break into this place and he is to have a bomb strapped to his chest and so he ends up taking over this broadcast to persuade people to remember, remember the 5th of November, because that is, of course, how we introduced this film, where a lot of people had forgotten about that whole event, where, uh, where someone had gone on and, and tried to seek out his own brand of justice, and he, I guess, had died for it. So... Or something along those lines. I don't remember. Like I don't even remember what they kind of rattled off was the actual fifth of November event. Uh, weirdly, but they mentioned that there was gunfire and all kinds of of things, and so more likely, yeah. Let me pause for for one second. All right, the fifth of November was to have covered a guy named Fox, who was to have gone on and trying to assassinate King James and I guess had failed. Supposedly there is a whole mini series I believe called Gun Gun uh Gunpowder that evidently the guy who plays Jon Snow on Game of Thrones uh that uh there is to whole be a whole mini series that is to cover that whole story about the 5th of November. So Go ahead and check that out, because um, evidently that was to cover that whole story. So you can go and watch that and just kind of get the uh, the understanding of what was to have really been the key importance to the whole 
November 5th because it was like, okay, like, I didn't quite understand or grasp that whole story. And so really I was trying to figure out like, okay, what was the actual 5th of November about? It was some kind of assassination attempt, but I don't really quite, un I didn't get the grasp of it. So, but so now V is to kind of have supposedly everybody uh, re-celebrate the 5th of November because supposedly they had gone on and like done that for a number of years and so normally there would be fireworks or bonfires or stuff like that to celebrate that day like in some ways or another like it would be treated as like the 4th of July to I guess a lot of people they would try to celebrate it in the same kind of way uh I guess for America an American understanding of things so V is trying to persuade a lot of people to re-celebrate that holiday. And so, and a lot of people are to seemingly just be like, you know what, like this guy, like there's something about this guy that's like, like I think we should like get behind this guy. We should start wearing this mask. We should go on and like be able to live our own lives instead of being imprisoned in our own homes because the whole uh, British time of things is to have these curfews and uh, are to force to just be like shut in and so on and so forth. So we have uh, V who is to take over this, uh, this of course, station and so we have finch and other detectives who are bursting into this place to try and retake back this uh this broadcast this network this building and so we have of course uh uh doscom the guy who is to be uh, seemingly attached to Finch, uh, Detective Finch, is to try and uh, disarm the bomb that is to be in this uh, this network building because uh, they're desperately trying to save this building because of how important it is because it's connected to seemingly every single uh, television worldwide, or just it's connected to, like, an emergency broadcast-like thing, so it's connected to any kind of TV everywhere. So, so, we have V, who is to go on and have everyone disguised as him, and so when they go in and they shoot the very first guy that they are to see and he falls over this guy is to mention that like he was to be costumed like everyone else was and even when he is to plead for them to not shoot him they shoot him anyways because they think that he's just this uh this v character so we get to a point where there is one spot where uh someone is to say that it's like, oh yeah, that's him, that's the anarchist. And so they go and they are to uh, like unmask this guy to find out that it's some random guy. We find out that V is to go on and take down these men and are to run off. So as he is to run off, we have of course one moment where Finch uh, is to go on and find uh, V and get to him before he leaves. And so Evie is to go on and is to rescue V from his attacker and knock this guy down. And Evie ends up getting knocked out in the process. So V ends up going and grabbing Evie taking him with her and running off to his secret hideout place where she is to go on with him to 
stay in this place supposedly for a year to hide her away to keep her safe. And so Evie is like, I can't stay here for a whole year. Like, that seems insane. But V is to tell her, well, like, think of it this way. Anybody is going to think that you're going to be my accomplice now. So anyone is going to tor find you, torture you, and make you forcibly tell where my hideaway is. And he's like, I don't even know where this is. And V's like, well, like, you have seen what the building looks like. You, like... You know that this is underground. You know that the like you know how the build the building is being is to be built. Like you can come up with some kind of clear consensus or a smart detective would of where I am to live. So you can have easily figure this out, which really I can just make the consensus that this guy is to just live in this subway station somewhere, because really at the end of the movie where uh, v is to have established this whole, uh, like, subway station bombing situation that ends up at the end of the film. I'm like, well, obviously then V is was just uh, in some, uh, like, part of a train station or subway station somewhere that had been condemned probably years ago, right? We have to assume or assess. So... And plus also he had supposedly taken like 10 years to carve out that whole um, like subway station. So you would think, yeah, like th that basically this guy just took 10 years to also make that whole hide hideaway for him. So, so pushing on. So V is to go off and uh, of course go... And and is to go after God. Where is he? Louis Prothero. 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 Because afterwards, Louis is to go on uh, to this TV. And is to mention, it's like, man, I would have loved to have just had five minutes with this guy face to face and uh, and uh, give him a what for kind of thing. And so while this guy is to go off uh, and is to be talking to one of his managers, mentioning how uh, he doesn't like how someone had like lighted him or lit him up or whatever. And how he is to want someone to get like sh canned because of that he's not doing a good enough job so when lewis is to watch himself and is to go on and say the same things that he was to have said on this tv screen all of a sudden we have uh when lewis is to turn this tv off uh we see lewis who sees v in the reflection of things so, now that V is to actually be there catching uh, Lewis off guard because he is to be coming out of his shower, V is to go on and I guess is to poison uh, Lewis and go on to give him this flower because he is to give flowers to every single person that he is to kill. As well as to just kind of remind them of who they were at some point in time. That I guess Lewis, instead of wearing a suit, was to be wearing a soldier's uniform. And was to seemingly be some kind of in-command presence uh, when he was to go and work at uh, the place called Lark Hill. Which... He was to be one of the uh, guys who was rounding up these prisoners to go into this Lock Hill uh, resettlement camp. So, we 
have, of course, the police officers going and finding Lewis's body. And so they go on and they are to say that instead of saying that Lewis was poisoned, they instead try to cover it up and say that he had a heart attack and had died at his home of natural causes. It's like, uh, okay, so we push on after that death and so they had covered that up. So we then turn around and have now V going after a uh, a priest of sorts. So and uh V is going to use the help of uh of Evie to to kind of lure this father out for again V to kill him. So I believe this I'm probably going to say this incorrectly. Um, because it doesn't say like father or so and so. Um, Lilyman? Is the father's name Lilyman in this movie? I'm not quite sure. So. We have Natalie Portman that is to come into this guy's office or Evie, dressed as this, like, seemingly young girl who, uh, when the father is to come in there, he's immediately thinking of whatever games that they are to play here. Kind of some kind of SEX kind of games that they are to play. And so he is immediately thinking of some kind of role play of sorts that they are to do. And so we have Evie who is confessing the truth to this father. And so this father is like... Man, you are a really creative girl. <laughs> like, man, you're really good at role-playing compared to all the other ones that I've been with. And so... But this father ends up going on further and further into... Uh, like, trying to prepare this girl for this uh, lovemaking session, I guess, that they were going to have to have. And so V comes on in and is to, of course poisoned this father and is to have killed him because his father had previously worked at this this camp and so uh they find out much later that this guy was to be this father and they're like so they start connecting the dots for this list of people that it's like oh, okay so uh it seems that uh V is going after every single one of these people that are to go on to this camp. And so Finch is going with his partner to now have to go and consistently uh, use this certain device so that way no one is listening in on their conversation. And they're coming up with more and more answers to where V is going to go next. And they're trying to figure out everything. So... V is to then uh, separate himself from Evie. Evie is to go to uh, this guy named Dietrich and is to hide out at his place. And so Evie is to mention, of course, that she was to go to Dietrich on the night uh, that she was to have... Uh, gone off to supposedly see her uncle and because supposedly he was sick so evie is to make her way to dietrich's place and is to explain uh what had happened to her and so evie comes into dietrich's place and so weirdly dietrich is to mimic every single thing that at one point v had said to her at some point or had done. Um, because when Evie was to awaken at V's place, uh, Evie was to get the same breakfast that V was to give her, and 
Dietrich at some point was to say the exact same thing that V had said to her. And so Evie is just like, you know what? This is so strange. It seems like you and, uh, and V, like everything that you have, that he has done and said seems very similar to what you had done. And so Dietrich is like, well, of course, because I am to tell you now that I'm V. <laughs> Which we really just find out is all just a ruse, is all just a lie. Um, and it is just be written off as some just weird coincidence. To, I guess, just give us this kind of, like, surprise-like moment that we just joke off. Um, but it, it is kind of very... Like, it is kind of an interesting thing where we have this guy mimicking what V does just to kind of give us this whole joke of a thing to just kind of like, ah, he's not V. <laughs> so he doesn't sound like V. Mm. So, but I thought that that was kind of fun. So Dietrich is to go on and is to be on the side of V, this anarchist. And so... Because Evie is to have gone with V, and so V is to mention that uh, that there's more to worry about than all the stuff that he is to have in his hideout, and so when Evie goes with Dietrich. Dietrich is to also mention that uh, Evie isn't going to be the only thing that he should worry about uh, the government finding. So which is kind of the same thing that V is to kind of say in the very similar kind of thing. Because Dietrich is to show Evie that uh, Dietrich is to have this whole secret room of this uh, kind of anarchist shrine of things where it's very rare and unique to find certain posters of the uh, of these political things and so on and so forth. So we go on and have this guy have this whole secret room uh, being against uh, seemingly these, these ways of things. And so... We end up also finding out that Dietrich was to also be gay because he is to mention that like that a woman wouldn't be something he actually does desire. It would it would normally seem to be a man, but he can't actually go and do that because he would of course got would have gotten taken away by someone. So. We have it where Dietrich and Evie are to go and watch TV. And so Dietrich is to go on and uh, and do this, uh, this show where we have V going on as like a kind of Looney Tunes cartoonish like character, supposedly being outsmarted by a uh, Sutler and that at every point in time we have Sutler who is just to be like having his shoes being tied together, having uh, this uh, like his cigarette being tampered with, all kinds of things. And so when V is to finally show up and just be like, hi, I'm here, like we have uh Sutler who is to just be like oh I'll, like someone get that V character and so he's running off and he trips over his shoelaces and it's all to be very looney tunish and whatever so when Sutler is to go and grab this V because his uh military force had gotten to get to where V is and so they had unmasked this V and we find out that Sutler was to basically unmask his own self. And then so now all of a sudden there are two Sutlers there. 
and now we have to come up with who is the actual correct settler, which is like it's kind of funny how they did that whole thing, which I'm sure it was whole like a, a whole V uh, or CGI kind of thing, or there was probably like a mask or a, a skin or whatever being placed on there. So like, but it was all good and fun and whatever. And so all of a sudden, I guess uh, Dietrich was to mention that Sutler, I guess, likes to like drink warm milk at certain times of night. So, and so that's kind of where like we open the scene with because Sutler, I guess, while watching this TV and watching this channel and watching this whole thing being put together is to crack his glass uh, being upset about what this guy had put together. So Dietrich had gone to talk to his manager and he had said, well, hey, like, I'm sorry, we should be able to easily get away with it. Uh, like, all we're going to get is like a slap on the wrist and like I can go and uh, like put together some public apology or whatever, but like, hey, like, I'm sure it'll be fine in the end because, like, we can, like, we can just get away with anything. And plus also, like, manager, the whole reason why you're you're doing this is to protect me. So, like, of whatever is to be the repercussions of this whole moment. So, instead of Dietrich just kind of getting a slap on the wrist and getting away with all this... We instead have Dietrich who ends up getting murdered by these soldiers and dragged off. And so Eve is to be hiding away while Dietrich is to be taken. And we find out that, like, Evie is to remember her mother get taken while she's much younger. This, the exact same manner. So... So we find out that Evie's parents were to be anarchists and that uh, they were supposedly almost forced to escape. But her father was to tell her mother, it's like, no, like, if we escape, these people win. So we can't escape. Like, we have to stay here and defy these people. So... Eve is to go and run off and she is to get caught by one of these, uh, one of these supposedly, uh, guards. And so Eve is to be taken to this prison where she is to now have to be forced to confess of where V is and where his hideout is or give them some information. And Eve will not go and tell them anything. And... But there's a whole, like, swing, there's a whole swerve thing that is eventually going to happen here, but we'll get to that point. So, V is to be locked away, or V, Evie is to be locked away, seemingly for uh, days on end, where she is going on and getting this paper of confession uh, by this person that she is supposedly to have a cell next to where this girl is to tell her this whole life story about her going on and finding certain loves of her life that were to be other females either in one classroom or to have had her go on to be this movie star where she ends up going and finding some other movie star where she falls in love with with this girl and then she ends up going and is to be forced to be uh, put into this camp or this prison in this scenario and she is tortured and forced to give up her love of her life and uh, to to basically point her out to say that she too um, was to be a person that was to either be killed or um, to be taken like she was and so we talk, we are to assume that shortly thereafter that she was to get killed after putting this whole note together. So we have it where 
we have this soldier that is to go on and is to then continue to like uh imprison Evie and then uh we finally like we finally get this guard who is to like ask Evie it's like well hey like um like why aren't you going to confess why aren't you going to like reveal like why aren't you going to uh like tell us any information and so on and so forth so Eve is just like because I have no fear like I have no fear of death or anything like that and so the guard is like well like that's to say that you are like so you feel free so like so now that you feel free you are going to be free and so the guard ends up going and uh, just stepping aside and letting Eve walk out this prison. And so the whole entire time we find out that Evie was to be in some kind of faked prison. And that she could have possibly left at any time. But she needed to be scared into absolute freedom to then have the ability to to uh like have her own choice in the matter and not having it feel like someone else had given or forced her to have a certain kind of choice in her life so evie had had her like hair completely butchered and, and shaved and Evie had been uh, seemingly tortured uh, had forcedly bathed and whatever while she was being tied up and so on and so forth numerous times tortured and so by the time that she finally broke by the time that she finally like didn't care what her punishment was was the time that she had gotten free to go on and go outside and feel the rain drop on her face for the first time in months of her being here, being imprisoned. Because uh, Evie is to mention that she is to feel dizzy and that she wants to go outside. And immediately when she has this dribble of water being poured onto her face she is to realize that she is to really and truly be free and that her parents were of course to be these anarchists that were to try to go against the government but had failed and so eve had turned around and just uh, like didn't want to go and do what her parents had done and because she had just worried about her own like safety or mortality or whatever that she like never like tried to follow in her parents footsteps so going on now so the next step of this is for V to go on and get his last, um, like supposedly his last, uh, person that had been involved, uh, in those camps. And so we now have V going after, um, De La Sur Surridge, Surridge, and so... I guess this is to be some doctor of some kind. So, and it's kind of funny because Finch had just recently spoken to her and had not even realized that she was actually a part of this list until like everybody else was to basically be bumped off. So, Finch is to now trying to get to Delilah, um... Or Delia, Delia, um, and so he ends up getting to her far too late. So 
V is to come into um, Surge's apartment and she is to go on and mention this, the origin story of uh, V, which I pretty much already kind of rattled off and mentioned. And so, of course, this woman is to go and ask uh, v for forgiveness and is there to have been any chance that that he would accept this and it's like well hey like you can like apologize at any point in your life about what you had done and so this girl does apologize and so she's like well you are here to kill me aren't you and he's like yeah i already did it like 10 minutes ago and she's like, well, is there going to be any pain? And he's like, no, like, you're just going to, you're just going to fall asleep. You're just going to die. And so the girl ends up doing what V is to say, and she is to fall asleep and die. And so V has now technically completed like his revenge, uh, for, uh, really just more for Valerie Page than really just himself, because I want to kind of keep that where like, it wasn't just like, it wasn't just for V like it wasn't just for selfish reasons. It was anybody that was to have been imprisoned because of this whole, uh, this whole thing that they were to do by taking every supposed certain kind of people, let's just say, grouping them together and forcing them to get tortured or killed or whatever, just because the way that they have gone about their lives or the, 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 the skin that they were to have had or uh, whatever other kind of reasons, whatever kind of things uh, that they had lumped them into a certain kind of category. So they had taken these people and wiped them out for that reason. So, cause it's funny because like V or funny, like it's interesting because V was to say, it's like, well, Hey, like I am not going after you because uh, like the person that you are now, like I'm going after you because the thing that you had done, the thing that you had done before, the things that you had, that you have, that you did. And I was like, okay, so that's like really interesting because like V is to just think that this person, like no matter if they had changed and become a 100% different person and better person and whatever and that even if this person became mother teresa and saved the world and whatever it's like no like you're still that same person that tortured people and experimented on them and murdered a ton of people and you didn't have one problem about it so yeah you're gonna die still because of that and I think that that's kind of so fascinating how when you have a, uh, a vengeful person that is just that focused that it doesn't matter if that person became a good person after that whole moment. It doesn't matter. You're still a murderer. So, like, that's the thing that I can enjoy about a movie where... I think, honestly, it would be a lot better if we had a lot of revenge stories that ended up getting written that way, where, like, uh, look at probably, like, the Valentine movie, where you would have it where, uh, like, a lot of the girls probably didn't deserve to be killed later on um, after numerous years of saying no to this boy at this dance, but he still went after them and slowly but surely killed all of them because they all had said no. It's like, well, the whole reason why that guy went after all those girls is because them saying no 
years before. And so it doesn't matter that they were to have changed and become better people after that whole moment. He still remembers that one moment that they were to have thought that they were to be better than him and were to have humiliated him and said no. And gone after them because of that. But a lot of those girls didn't really change much. And a lot of those girls didn't become better people. And so could have really just went off and, and, and ended their lives well before they were to come the vicious people that they were to have eventually just been become anyways but again that's just me right so like that's the thing where you always have that person that is to just say like well hey like maybe that person could have gone off and could have killed like a hitler kind of person where it's like gone and taken this person out before they were to become this vicious person that they were to become and, like, yeah, like, if V would have gone off and killed all of these people at this camp, he would have probably prevented uh, a number of people that could have become these even worse people down the road. Which, that's what he's kind of cleaning up now. So... V is to go on and so after he is to kill his last uh, his last person connected to this camp, now we have it to where V is going off and killing then Creed uh, and or Creedy and then uh, well he's to kill off Sol uh, Solter and then kill off Creedy and then go and uh, do his whole subway thing uh, where he is to then go and bomb uh, the Big Ben because of the symbolize the symbolizing thing of it. So while that is also going on, we start to have a bunch of people who are to all start to get in disguises of V. And are to start to wear the same mask as him, are to start to wear the certain costume as him, and are going around. And so sadly, we end up having one girl getting shot because of her wearing the costume of V. And one officer is to say, like, hey, I'm, I'm, like, hey, I'm, I'm police, like, don't come after me, like, because, <laughs> like, she was wearing this costume, she was this suck disguise of this person. And the people in town are just like, no. Like, that still isn't right. Like, this person did not have a gun on her. This person was not to uh, hurt anybody. So we're going to hurt you because of what you did. And so they end up taking shovels and they end up beating this guy to death. And so, like, there's a lynch mob kind of just going on for this whole guy. So everyone decides to go on and get these... Uh, these V masks and they all start to go and walk through the town and supposedly this military force had created this barricade to stop these people but Finch is to warn uh, or is to tell them not to go and shoot any of these people um, to just kind of let them walk so that way they can just go and do what they are going to do because they are not like they're peacefully protesting in some kind of way. Like, we have it to where, like, it's very evident where we have in, uh, like, movies of, t or movies, we have situations that are going on today where um, certain people have gone on to do these, like, marches or walks or whatever. And so there isn't a, pol uh, a police force that is going to stop these people from doing what they're doing, even though, like, they're basically completely stopping traffic. It's just the fact that, like, hey, they're peacefully protesting, marching. We're not going to stop them. We're going to let them do whatever, like, they want as long as they're doing it in a peaceful way. So 
this is kind of the same situation where these people are going out, even though it's probably against curfew, even though it's against uh, probably the government, like these people are still doing a peaceful protest to just march their way to Big Ben to see this building eventually explode. So we have it where, uh, so let's get to it. So we have Salter who is to go on and it is getting closer and closer to the 5th of November. And so Salter is to basically say like, I don't want anything to go on tonight without a hitch. Like if we have any other thing happening here, like, I'm going to have Creedy's freaking resignation to read off tomorrow instead of a newspaper. And so, we have just kind of everybody just kind of on guard of just like, hey, like, what's going to happen? Like, <laughs> like, what is this guy going to do? So on, so forth. So, we, interestingly enough, have Finch go on and find um, where V is to give Evie this uh, subway car full of this fertilizer where she can choose to detonate this explosive because, like, V can't make that choice. V can't set off this explosion because one, he's busy going and, and uh, killing off a number of people before he's to get back to the subway for Eve to make this decision. And plus also, like, it was never really V's decision to, to do any number of these things. Like, yeah, like, he sought out revenge, but it was never really, a, like, like, for me... Even to give someone else this decision because he was to have, it, instead of just himself choosing to do this, like there had to be the people that had to decide to do this. Where Vias mentioned that people should not fear their government, the government should fear its people. To where instead, like, V is leaving it to Evie because she is a person who is to decide the f and leave it to the people to decide the fate of their, uh, of their own symbolism or their own, uh, what is the right word here? Um, he's leaving it to the people to decide their own fate whether they are to go and uh, explode this symbol that should no longer exist because uh, because they have grown past that or it's just a reminder of um, a reminder of something uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to come up with the I'm trying to come up with a poetic way of, of justifying the destruction of Big Ben. Uh, and someone will probably come up with that in the comments, because I'm sure there's poetical people that are to come up with a more um, soliloquy or whatever kind of uh, thing to just kind of mention about what is, the, what is to really be Big Ben in their own thought process or mind or whatever. So, we... So we have V going off to uh, meet up with Creedy, who is to deliver this politician, who supposedly this politician was to go on and be on TV delivering this address to people, uh, letting them know uh, that this, uh, that there will be justice to this guy who is to be going off and and creating chaos and so on and so forth. So Salter is weirdly doing this press conference or this uh, this uh, televised thing, but he's not actually there. 
So it was like a pre-taped live thing that went out. So, because Solter is actually with Creedy. And so, we just quickly have where Creedy is to go and shoot Solter in the head. And then, so after that, we have V who is to go on and is to one by one start uh, chucking these sides or these so or these daggers and start to kill all these guards because all these guards go and shoot into V but don't quite kill him because he has all this body armor on. And so V ends up starting to one by one uh, start to stab through all of these guards while they're reloading their guns. And so we get where V goes and cuts through and kills Creedy also. We had also this one moment where Finch was to have V himself give Finch information because uh, V had went on to send uh, Finch some message saying like, hey, let's meet up. And so, uh, so V is telling Finch all this information about this story. And so Finch is just like, well, okay, we're going to bring you in to protective custody and you'll be like the witness of this. And so you can go on and like bring these guys to justice. And so V is just like, no, like, I'm not going to do that. Like, I'm already going to do that, but, like, but all I've ever wanted to wait for is a detective like you, Finch, that is going to, like, help me with this cause. So, we go on and we have uh, V coming back to Evie, and so V goes on and is to kind of be placed into this subway, and is to have a number of flowers surrounding him. And Evie is to have wanted to go and uh, figure out a way to bandage up V. But V's like, no, that's going to be a waste of time. I'm going to bleed out. So, and plus V wanted to go out this way. Like kind of, V is to mention that he wants to go and meet his maker. And... To thank him for all the, the things that he has given him. And so that's where V was going to go off. To think that he was going to die facing Creedy, but he didn't. So Evie is to go and put V into this subway. And is to surround him with flowers. And all of a sudden Finch is to arrive to stop Evie from hitting this button on the subway and so Evie is to tell Finch like you know what how about you just stop like how about you just like let me hit this button because it's probably much more so the right thing to do kind of thing so like I'm par I'm hugely paraphrasing here they go on this whole line of dialogues and whatever but Finch just puts his guard down as well as tells tell every one of the uh, military force to put their guns down also to just let people enjoy this moment. Even though it's blowing up the Big Ben, it's like, nah, we don't care. Just, like, explode this building, fireworks going off, and all kinds of stuff. So, Evie hits the letter, the lever, and then gets out of the, the subway. And... So the train goes off and explodes Big Ben, big finish. Everybody's like, ooh, ah, ooh, fireworks, yay, great. So, and of course, music is playing yet again. So the Big Ben is to go off, the story is to finish up, and, like, wouldn't it have been weird if, like, we would have found out, like, hey, V's not dead, <laughs> Like, that would have been a, f a weird ending to just be like, oh, well, like, so. We have this one point where Evie is to mention that technically V could really just be anybody. Could have been her father or her brother or her mother or whoever. And so, like, that could be the interesting thing about a masked individual. 
And it was kind of funny because Eve's first uh, thing to to ask this V character, it's like, who are you? And V was like, isn't that kind of weird to go and ask a masked man who he is? <laughs> like, he's trying to conceal his identity and you want to know what that is? <laughs> like, why are you asking him that? So... With that said, I think I've covered most of this movie. Uh, I know this is a long stretch of a review, um, but I like this movie weirdly. I don't know why I like it. It's the question mark of why I enjoyed it so much. But I think I can understand this movie more because of all the stuff that has kind of happened in the world. And so that can be like the easy, like, I think when this movie came out, this movie didn't make a, a lot of, un, like, this movie didn't like this movie didn't make a lot of sense because there was none of this stuff that happened in the world. Now we've gotten to a much more place in the world where pretty much all of this stuff has almost now happened and we're seeing what the heck next is going to happen now. And so this movie didn't make sense of when it came out, but now we can start to see that this movie must have been much more made for a future viewing so with that said i think i'm going to get out of here um yeah i think that's all i have to say so if there's anything i completely messed up because uh, i'm sure there is because <laughs> i know v was to go off and give uh evie the whole entire hideout that V was to have been hiding out in and so like I thought that was kind of cool as like V realizing that he is going to die soon and that he's going to leave everything to Evie to maybe if there was going to be a V for Vendetta sequel we could have Natalie Portman now taking on the mantle of V and having her own brand of justice because maybe she is to go after the people that had uh taken her mother or any number of things uh we could have written this story in a number of different directions that maybe uh v was to go and leave off uh nally portman's character um some list of other people to go after who knows um but like v was to go and do his own uh his own personal revenge but even though i say his own like it's really other pe him his in his own reason for revenge like that's where i like to say it is it like it's not who was his own selfish thing like v didn't do any of this for his own selfish reasoning uh it was always to be because of others and so that's the reason why V went on and let Evie choose to do that whole subway thing or not, because he was to always rely on others instead of himself. And so the having all these people go and wear this, this mask and, and put on this costume was again V relying on others to then um, give him strength to have him continue on this journey because there are like-minded people like V who are to want this all to break down and so on and so forth. Um, so with that said, I'm going to get out of here. Yeah. Uh, hopefully everything was covered. There's a lot of, there was a lot of stuff to cover. Uh, there's probably a hundred different details that I probably missed about this film or I didn't get into. But with that said, this is a two hour and change movie. So this is just my variation of the review. So I'm going to get out of here. Bye everybody. Bye everybody.